With all of the positive feedback I got after showing you my first custom CMF series showing a bunch of castle minifigures, I guess it's time for another one focused of course on a different theme this time that I think many of you would love to add to your collection. So today, as chosen by you guys in the poll on my community page, we will be focusing on another classic theme taken straight from the 90s that is slowly making itself back into the LEGO lineup and that is the Pirates. There used to be a lot of great sets in this theme back in the day, all centered around three main factions being of course the Pirates, Imperial Soldiers and Islanders led by the one and only King Kahuka and now it's time to relive these memories once again. Of course this series as well as the previous one wouldn't be such fun without my personal touch in the form of custom boxes and leaflets because that's how we do things around here in Kubrick. So it's time to open up a bottle of rum and dive into the endless sea of creativity so let's get started right now. But to start off properly, just a quick reminder that the LEGO logo is a trademark of the LEGO group which does not sponsor, authorize or endorse this product, which was only made for entertainment purposes and to show my passion for all things LEGO. But having that said, let's now jump into the box's design. And as in the previous one, the box is based on the one we are currently getting with all of the official CMF series just remade with my own graphic design, this time in yellow to better fit the theme inside, with some of the figures on the front of the box, and yeah, I like how it turned out. I have to admit, I was a bit afraid that the figures will disappear on the yellow background, but it all turned out quite well, so I have a pretty decent addition to my collection. But the box isn't, of course, the only thing I did, so now let's quickly go over the flyer. And here we have the same story as for the box. All is made identical to the castle series showing up all 12 minifigures with each of the figures shown in their full glory but since I wanted to include all of the three classical factions not only I separated them here on the flyer but also I organized the opening order just so we can have them reviewed in a more appealing way. Okay but now let's start unboxing the series beginning of course with the pirates themselves. And the first minifigure on the list is the Pirate Captain. I of course had to use the good old wooden leg, but to make things more modern looking, I used the torso from a musketeer fig from CMF12 and topped it with some golden epaulets, a head with an eye patch, naturally, a classic pirate hat, and just some standard accessories for a captain being a pistol and a compass to navigate his crew through the storm. Moving on to the second pirate, let's talk about the tattooed guy. I used the torso from Barracuda Bay but replaced the arms with the ones with even more tattoos and a hook for a hand to complete his menacing look, gave him a pair of patched pants a bag over his arm and a newer mold for the headscarf, although I think that the old one would look good here as well. And as for the accessories, just a regular pistol and the hermit crab right beside him to keep him some company or maybe even some lunch if he stays on the deserted island for too long. The next figure from the Pirates team is actually the only girl in the lineup with some high boots on her dual molded legs, a green vest and an awesome green cape from some Ninjago figure. Besides that, she has a classic trifold hat, a scar on her face and is carrying a sword and a bottle of wine to lighten the mood after a long day of pillaging other ships. And finally, the fourth member of the pirates is a mean one. with a beard and some long hair taken straight from Jack Sparrow, a renewed version of the classic striped shirt and some torn pants taken from the CMF Outcast figure, which fits to this guy perfectly. As for accessories, I gave him a regular sword, some old school coins 
and a parrot friend to sit on his arm. Ok, now moving on to the Imperial soldiers, first we have a regular soldier from the Red Faction, which actually isn't too much of a complicated figure, just a regular uniform and a hat, with an addition of a rubber band to hold his sword, and of course a classic rifle to fight the baddies. And the second one from the soldiers is actually the same figure, only being a member of the blue faction, with the exact same elements, just using a renewed torso from the new Eldorado fortress. Now these two may not be the most innovative figures, but let's face it, that's all we need to build an army or two when we would get a bunch of those, right? But for these two armies, we would actually need some generals, so first, let's take a look at the one from the Red Faction. And here, besides the old Red Torso, I made use of Queen's Legs from the new Lion Castle set, and a cape from Doctor Strange, which, in my opinion, goes so well with the Red Appellates. He also, of course, had to have a classic officer's hat and a couple of accessories like a golden sword in one hand and a letter with some important orders in the other. Leading the blue army, we have a totally different officer, this time using again a new torso from the Eldorado fortress, white epaulets, a blue cape and a trifled hat. And as for the accessories, I decided to give him a bit more than just put a pistol and a map in his hand, and the guy is accompanied by a seagull, because when building something in this theme, you can never have enough of these, right? Ok, and now what we have left are 4 Islanders minifigures. And since they were always one of my most beloved factions from all of the LEGO themes, I had a lot of fun mixing out these pieces. So the first one is a warrior that I guess is a fan of skeletons, because beside a sword made from bones and a skull held in his hand, he has one painted on his face to wreak terror on his enemies, and of course he has a bone stuck on the classic Islander's hairpiece. And as for the body, he has a torso painted in some tribals, a pair of leaf-made shorts, and another one of these green capes on his back, and we got ourselves a very menacing figure who I wouldn't want to meet face to face on the tropical island. On the other side of the scope, we have a totally different figure, which is the Hunter. Smiling from ear to ear, we can see that this guy really likes his role in the community. With a torso from the Outcast CMF figure, a fabric piece for some leaf made shorts, and a giant snake skull on his head. He's the one responsible for getting food, so I gave him a spear and a fish in his hand, and a sea turtle to be his next prey. Now moving on to the next figure, we have the one and only King Kahuka. But besides the iconic mask and the shield, I also equipped him with a piece of shoulder armor which fits the mask perfectly, and an Aztec sword, which I won't even try to pronounce the actual name, which could be found in the Aztec warrior figure from one of the CMF series. Also from that fig, he's got his heavily tattooed legs, and to give him some markings on the torso, I used the one from Ninjago with some snakes on the sides, and I think he turned out a perfect reimagining of one of the most recognizable classic LEGO figures. And the last figure I have for you in this series is a plain archer, again utilizing a piece from the Aztec warrior, this time the torso piece, legs from the caveman figure, an Indian hat, and of course a bow and a quiver for his arrows. And here I didn't want to use the same bow mold that LEGO is using since the 90s, and I made him a custom one, made simply by grabbing two brown horn pieces and connecting them with a piece of a string. And to have something to shoot with, he's got a Harry Potter wand in the other hand, which acts as a single arrow. But naturally, he had to have something for target practice, so I gave him a monkey, because why not? And this way, my friends, we have the entire pirate-themed CMF series, and I have to say that I'm very happy of how they turned out. The pirates were always one of my favorite themes, although I didn't have much sets when I was a kid, but I always tried to make my own builds constantly reusing the same figures, 
so I think that my younger version would really appreciate this series coming out back then. But what do you think about these figures and which one of them is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and of course drop a like if you enjoyed this video overall. The custom CMF series videos will be coming back for sure, but the same as with this one, I want to know what theme would you like me to take on next time. Write them down in the comments below and after getting some ideas, I will also make a poll to choose the one I will build. And if you somehow missed the previous castle series, make sure you check out this video showing up on the screen and I will see you all in the next video here on Kubrick. But for now, I just want to wish you a great rest of the day and as always, just remember to keep it breaking.